Hi folks, this is Barry Carter, the co-author of Poker Satellite Strategy. Um, and I'm here with Dara O'Kani, the lead author of the same book. And today we're going to review a satellite session that I played uh, last week, just because we haven't really done something like this before, and we, we, we really should have. And it'd be interesting to apply the lessons uh, from the book into a, into a real life session. So Dara, how's it going? Very good, great to be here. Yep, and uh, this is a session I played on Party Poker. I played two satellites. Uh, I am the non-professional poker player, for anyone who's wondering. Um, Dara is the expert, so I'm going to play the recording. Uh, we, we've gone with a, a recording of a session rather than a hand replay, um, in part because there are decisions that, um, in satellites, such as stalling decisions, that really can't be um, easily shown in a hand history replay and also it, it, uh, i'm playing a party poker here and every uh, every single hand that you see you can see my precise position in the tournament during the hand which is a massive part of satellites right dara like actually seeing where you are relative to yeah that's that's up yeah you're right that's absolutely massive and also being able to see the lobby in some cases to see what the stacks are like on other tables um like somebody sent me a hand recently and they asked me you know, is this a caller thing? And I said, it completely depends on what the other stacks are. Um, there's, there's no general answer. Uh, sometimes, you know, there might be 15 seats and you're 14 of 16 and you're effectively locked up. Other times, you know, you might be, you, you might be only a 50-50 shot when you're 14 of 15 or 14 of 16. So you need to be able to see the other stacks. Yeah, exactly. There, there can be shots, uh, spots where you're 15 of 15, but you know that uh, somebody on another table is literally about to blind away. I mean, yeah. I've had had a few sessions recently where I've had a third of a big blind and I'm two positions away from posting the big, the final big blind, but I've been sort of ni close to 99% confident that I'm getting the seat by doing nothing. So yes, it is an important consideration. Um, but uh, let's, uh, let's play away. I, I even um, recorded me registering for these tournaments uh, specifically because I registered late in the tournament yeah and as you can see in the uh i just pause this video here um you know there's 24 uh, there's 15 players of an original 24 uh players so I've, I've already outlasted nine players and that's one of the one of the key things in a satellite right it's you know the uh you only have to outlast x number of players and you win the same prize as everybody else that's right, yeah. If you if you run an ICM calculation here, uh, the actual maths would would probably indicate that your buy-in is probably already worth something like one point two buy-ins just because of ICM, uh, because of the players who bust already. Now, this is the um, the newly introduced tournament dollar satellites from Party Poker. They've reintroduced uh, what used to be quite an old system of giving you a flexible tournament dollar rather than uh, forcing you to play into another satellite. Um, I know Dara kind of made his name in these tournaments back in the day, uh, but have you been playing these since they were reintroduced? Yes, I have. Yeah, these these have revitalised the 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 tournament. Oh, sorry, the satellite ecosystem uh, on Party. It's it's great to see because. Uh, there's there's more liquidity now. Obviously, people are not worried about tickets expiring or stuff. Or the stuff that you used to have to be worried about. Uh, you can you can just run up a bankroll. It's good to see lots of recreational players getting involved as well. So yeah, it's just been a very good innovation overall. I mean, personally, one of the um, uh, one of the things I struggled with at the beginning of these satellites. Um, love to get your thought on this. Is that when I play, I, I was playing satellites anyway on, on party poker because I quite enjoyed the token system. Um, and the token system tended to be one in five get a seat. And since the tournament dollar system is being introduced, it's actually one in 10, which I guess the, uh, the adjustment there is to play a slightly looser style um, than the, you know, it's still incredibly tight. But yeah. a looser style than usual because chip accumulation is more important. Is that, is that about right? That's right. Yeah, you you, you have to play very slightly looser. Um, th th I think there are still one in fives. So there's like twenty twos to hundreds and stuff. But uh, yeah, I, I mean, I remember when I was coaching um, a stable, and w one of the big issues they had when pa when party made a change uh, back then as well, from mostly a one in five to one in ten, they suddenly found that lots of their 
winning satellite players were actually losing now. Um, mm. And having gone through the hand histories, it was exactly that. They were they, they had developed uh, sort of intuitively a, a very good style to, to win in 1.5, uh, in, in 1 to 5s, but that was just a little bit too tight for 1 to 10s. Um, and th- yeah, there are some adjustments around that for sure. And I've, um, I've noticed that the, um, the late reg in the... Um, uh, when you late reg into a into a T dollar satellite now, you actually late reg and still get about fifteen to twenty big lines. Whereas the uh, the previous token system, you sometimes were able to, to late reg with like seven and a half big lines. And I, I guess again, it's it's because seven and a half big lines would probably just not be enough to justifiably late reg into one where you've actually got to accumulate chips still like a one in ten this, this is actually a, a slightly counterintuitive thing but like if you are late regging the less blinds the better uh, the uh, more profitable now the reason why it's counterintuitive is that most of your experience when you come in with 7.5 or a significant part of your experience will be the first time to play you'll bust and and and, and therefore there's this constant negative reinforcement mm. but actually when you run the maths you find that if you if you graph the profitability of different stack sizes um, you'll find that you know obviously like if you're if, if you're a very skillful player and you play the stack correctly then as the stack size increases your profit goes up so you know when you go from 100 to 200 big blinds uh, you become more profitable when you go from 200 to 500 etc so as as the stack size declines from 100 down to about 25 I don't quote me on this but it's somewhere around there uh, your profitability goes down but then once there's a, there's an inflection point uh, where it actually starts to become more profitable again, uh, the shorter your stack gets, and the reason for that is, um, you the, the shorter your stack is, there the more spots there are where you steal fold equity from bigger stacks. Um, right, right. And if you t- if you take it to the a- absolute logical conclusion, like if you could come in with one ante, mm-hmm. so you're you're going to be forced all in. Uh, on the first hand, that's still insanely profitable for you because what's going to happen? Well, everybody's going to post an ante. If there's eight players at the table, you're getting seven to one on your money. You're going to be up against one or two hands that will get to showdown uh, yeah. with with a random hand. You only need 12.5% equity to break even. You probably have like 20, 30, 40% equity. So it's insanely profitable. Uh, and this is actually true. Like the shorter your stack gets, the more profitable spots there are um so really? yeah i never thought of it in those terms in terms in terms of stealing fold equity uh we'll bench that for the moment because that definitely comes into play in this session um I, I i i'm pretty certain i folded this hand here i just paused it because it's like in some situations this is a really really good spot for a squeeze like in a regular tournament this seems like a decent spot for a squeeze because you know we've got fold we, we've got a big stack to make the fold but do, do you ever flat or squeeze with a raggy hand like king, king four here, or is it? A- if the if I had information that the other two players were far too loose and are going to fold far too much to the shove, uh, then I might shove uh, this hand. The, the king is kind of useful because, like, if you know, we can actually be ahead when we're called if the guy's going to call off with queen jack. It's just the yeah. four is such a bad card uh, that, like, if we get called by fours plus, or we're we're, we're very. Even even when we get we get called by Queen Jack, it's not much better than a flip, and we can obviously be crushed. So it's just a little bit too weak. It also plays really badly as a as a flat. Now that said, the the, the if this was a, an under the gun opener, um, this is definitely a, a fold because uh, uh, we're just going to be dominated so much, and the hand plays. Uh, badly this this is one of those spots where people sometimes call because they say they're getting a price but the fact that we're getting a price is because there's another player in the in the hand yes. and if you're if you're on the equity of king four off suit against two you know even fairly wide ranges it's pretty terrible um yeah. and it's difficult enough to realize equity now that said there are some Mitigating factors here. We're so shallow that if we hit a pair, we can probably just go with it. Although a four won't be great on a on an ace queen four board. Um, but if we hit our king, I guess we go with it. And if we're dominated, we're dominated. But I think it might be borderline profitable. But I, but I would just fold here. It's just um, there. There are going to be better spots for sure. I'm almost certain. I'm, yeah, there we and I would have hit my this this is a this is a board now where we 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 would be in trouble. I mean, we're we're basically going to have to probably just go with the hand. 
unless it goes bet raise, I guess. Uh, but yeah, against that action, we probably just have to check shove and hope he doesn't have a pair. Yeah. Yeah, I guess a 2x is still probably a fold, but um, I guess a 3x is a very easy fold. Actually, while we're on the subject, people are playing very badly against b bigger open sizes. Now you really have to tighten up your defending range uh, once they go up to 2.5x or 3x. Right. Right. Okay. And do I have a way of speeding this up? I... Yeah. We're about to get aces, so that'll be an interesting one too. Yeah. I am, um, as a, uh, I, I found myself. Um, making it pretty obvious that I've got aces a lot in satellites where in situations where I'm almost always shoving, I suddenly min raise. Yeah. Uh, I actually think that's perfectly okay in the smaller stakes satellites because I, I presume most people aren't paying attention. Would you agree with that? Analysis? Yeah, I would agree with that. And I think even in higher stakes, sometimes uh, the regulars are just playing too many tables and they might not notice. Mm. Um, you basically have to give them at least a chance to, to, to make a mistake. Like when you shove, you, they're going to play pretty close to perfectly but uh but yeah there's a chance somebody will just not notice <laughs> that's it going mental and then uh, you don't get cute and flat here in this situation i mean this is the king four situation again if i'd um obviously if i'd have uh, squeezed the first time around this would have been a perfect opportunity to squeeze again for that I, I think i probably would flat here i mean how far off the money are we some 17 and 19 and three people paid. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I would actually flat here, I have to say. Uh, take a risk. It's just our hand is so strong. Uh, kings I'd shove because like there's 6.2 big blinds out there and even denying equity to ace rag uh, is pretty good. But like aces is just such a lockdown hand. Um, so if this, was, um, if this was like the, the tournament on the top table with five in the money and we're, you know, like... Uh, only 10 people to get rid of you you probably be, be a bit more obvious with the aces and just get the money in but because we have to take some risks to accumulate chips it's uh, yeah i think it's just it's it's i mean it's it's not don't get me wrong like it's not a terrible result for us if we shove and they fold because we add almost half to our stack but uh but yeah i think with aces i would um i would usually just flat and basically just check check call the whole way uh, what, do you, yeah. what do you think of a call with the nines out? Of yeah, it's definitely a call for sure. Uh, like you only have 13 and a half bigs, so you should be going with uh, a lot of hands that nines is in great shape against. So th this seven nine hand, this is the, you'll, you'll notice that I, my cursor is sort of deliberating over this one. <laughs> I have to do like, would you say this, would you say this is a shove? This is probably borderline profitable shove, but I wouldn't take it because anytime I'm thinking I'm shoving, I'm, I'm asking myself, like, what's the upside versus the downside? Now, the upside here is we win 2.3 bigs and we go from like 31.3 to 33.6, which is nice, mm. but, you know, not brilliant. Uh, the downside is we're going to be in really bad shape if we're called. Uh, mm. I think this is just a great spot to limp. Right, okay. Uh, like, that's, that's something I don't even do in satellites anymore, really. Um, yeah, I pretty much limp. I, I limp a super wide range. So if I had aces here, I would limp as well. Um, yeah, I limp my entire range. And because I do that, then I get to play hands like this, uh, mm. which I don't think are great shoves. Um, and actually, the limp stab uh, play is really good in satellites because... Yeah. I have started to notice that. Yeah. Yeah, people like the ice, like most of the time they're checking because they don't have a hand that's strong enough to raise. Uh, if they're the kind of guy who, who who always pounces on limps, well then you're going to be protected by the stronger hands in your range. That's fine too. If they're going to check behind two times out of three, they're going to miss the flop and they're going to fall to your one big blind bet. Mm -hmm. So it's um, yeah, it's 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 kind of a secret weapon in these spots. And I, I, I know I folded in this one because I, I did wonder about it afterwards. So I did actually run it in... Uh, in as a shove. This is as a shove. Nice it's a 9-7 off. Yeah, this, is, this is me pondering whether to shove. On. Yeah, so you can see it is actually borderline. Um, he pr What's his calling range supposed to be? 
Um, I don't know because this is a screenshot. Oh, it's a thing. screenshot. Yeah, like I think probably people don't call wide enough in these spots. Right. Um, so it, that might push it towards being borderline profitable. But as you can see, either way, it's going to be borderline anyways, which is why I don't like it. Like. Yeah. Even if this was plus 0 0.05, I wouldn't take it because shoving effectively 22 big blinds to win 120th of a big blind um, is not great satellite strategy. In a bigger buy-in satellite, would you ever lean towards shoving for kind of metagame purposes? To if, if, if this was one of the best satellite players in the world, I would shove uh, for sure because I'd know they, they, would, they would know how tight their calling range has to be. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, I think they would actually overfold in those spots for sure. Um, yeah, so I, I did like to go because I was. Uh, but if you ever see me uh, do this on a screen, it's because I'm thinking about it and I want to memorize the, the exact same situation here. Like I know my, I, I know my sort of twenty big line shoving ranges quite well, and this was another really really close one for me. Yeah. Like obviously we've um, well we can pick up more of a pot than in the uh, the previous example. But again, what's your, what's your line with this hand and what's your shoving range with this hand? Yeah, I don't shove this hand for sure. Uh, this, I mean, this is a hand I want to play. So the question is, how do I play it? I don't think it works great as a shove because even though we can win two point three, it's still in the context of the tournament. Losing twenty five big blinds or twenty four point four big blinds is if the big blind wakes up with something is pretty disastrous winning 2.3 bigs is nice but not major um so i would rule out the shove we so that 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 leaves either limp or raise um this is actually a pretty good hand to limp uh because yeah. it flop it flops very well um mm -hmm. and it, it and it, and it doesn't it plays pretty well multi-way so letting the small blind is in is not a factor like if we had a hand like a seven off i'm more likely to raise that because i don't want it to go three way but with mm -hmm. queen eight suited i don't mind going three way when i'm in position against two fairly weak ranges um so yeah i think i think limping would be my preferred option here generally the way i would split my ranges i would i would shove the hands that are clearly profitable to shove um i would raise hands i want to play that i don't want to shove that have a blocker um, but don't right. flop particularly well, particularly multi-way. And then I would limp some really strong hands, uh, like aces, like where I'm actually looking for action, and um, hands like this that play well multi-way, but don't have great blockers. And then, and then this is all right now because we've got like 24 big blinds affected. So there is still an element of, of playing this. You, you're not yeah, this, this, is, this is exactly the stack depth at which limping becomes pretty much the the default with, with most of your range because if you raise they have a very wide range of profitable reshoves but if you limp uh you know if you if you raise the big blind has there's going to be 4.3 big blinds out there which is exactly almost exactly 20 percent of his stack which is the sweet spot for the shove um he picks up 20 percent of his stack if he shoves and you fold so he's going to have a, a very wide range of 20 percent is actually the the sort of um the the inflection point for that but if you limp there's only going to be 3.3 .3 big blinds out there so he's only going to be picking up about 15 percent. so suddenly his shoving range gets a lot less uh gets a lot tighter has to get a lot tighter and he has some tricky decisions with, with lots of his range where he has a hand which he doesn't want to shove but but it's a, it's stronger than your limping range so he thinks maybe he should raise it for uh for value um and then a hand at queen eight suited plays fine as a as a limp call um, because yeah. you're going to be in position. Just, uh, just because I, just to kind of put the point once again, Queen of Suit was right on the line. Literally the right on the line. Yeah, like I don't take those close spots when they're show when they're shoves because you're shoving a lot to to, to win very little. Um, yeah. Like even again, even if that was like plus zero point zero five, I wouldn't take it because you're shoving twenty four bigs effectively to win one twentieth of a big. Okay, so what are we going to do for the break? I'm just, I'm just trying to zoom <laughs> So I actually did wonder about this Jack Queen hand, um, but I, I mean, a lot of these uh, hands are going to be uh, of um, 
that I thought were interesting are, have already been addressed with your analysis. But again, I, I, I know Jack Queen is probably a profitable shove uh, at the top table with 14 big blinds. What, what, where are you with that? What's your understanding? Yeah, I would, I, yeah, I would take this one. Uh, it's, well, for, for a start, no girl, no parties effectively out of the tournament. So we're actually like effectively one seat later. Um, mm. the, the thing is, you can actually play this hand a number of different ways. Like it doesn't have to be a shove. You can also raise this hand. The problem with raising the hand is, it, is it's going to be a raise fold and it doesn't have a blocker. Um, yeah. It's not going to be strong enough to raise call anybody. Well, obviously, no girls, no party. We don't. We, we won't even have to click the call. But uh, but we can also limp it because again, same with the queen eight suited on the button. This hand plays very well if people limp behind. Uh, mm. it, it's not the end of the world. So um, yeah, my default would be to shove, and I and and I would take the shove in that spot. But uh, I would sometimes limp it as well at certain tables where there's not a lot of raising going on. Yeah, um, I mean, I mean, I'm going to whiz through some hands. Like I, I'm pretty certain this guy's going to shove, and I'm going to fold. I, I don't particularly consider that for analysis because you, I think most people realise in a satellite you need a tremendously strong hand to call any sort of set of set of the only thing i would say is we're so we're so far off the bubble here that that might not i see it might not be that big a factor yet uh like there's 23 left and there's three paid right uh yeah uh, no, in the top table it was in five uh, oh five sorry five yeah um yeah i guess i see them starting to be a factor yeah yeah it's true So I guess I folded or timed a king queen to a ship there. Um, okay, I'm certainly going to play this one. Yeah, the the, the queen jack were if it's, it's almost like we're we we're, we're in. The small blind, um, so I would shove uh, because we really only have to worry about the big blind. I actually recognize the name Miss Discipline as one of the better grinders as well, so uh, they will play correctly. Um, we don't have to worry about them calling too much against the open shove, it's just a fold, obviously. Uh, the ace king, we can, we can again, we can go lots of ways with this. We can shove it, which is obviously fine. Um, how many are paid in that three? Yeah, I think I would probably try to induce action here. Again, like it kind of depends on your overall game. If your overall game, like I would be limping hands like queen eight suited on the button at this stack depth. So therefore I'm going to limp this hand as well yeah. uh, to protect my range. Right. So, and, 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 and because we're suited, this hand doesn't mind if the small blind comes along as well. If I, so the way I would split my range here is if I had ace king off suit, I would raise call it. Um, mm -hmm. If I have ace king suited, I would limp, limp, re raise, shove it. So if somebody pounces on the limp, you know, makes it four or five big blinds, I would, I would reshove. Um, I think with a hand like this, this far from the bubble at the stack depth, where it's not, while it's nice to pick up the blinds, and if we were near the bubble, I would definitely just be shoving. This far off the bubble. Um, I would be looking for action. So you'd probably be more in the shove mode when we get to the final table, like play, play, play. Yeah, I think the point at which ICM starts to become really big, and I think we say this in the book, is when there are three times as many players left as there are prizes. Um, right. So in a in a situation where there's three seats, like in this one, nine would be the would be would be the cutoff. When you're above that, it, it it's a difficult balancing act because. Um, we're far enough off the money that we can't, we're in no way locked up and ICM isn't a massive factor, but we, because of the antis, we want to be playing a lot of hands, particularly in that position, which is why like, I wouldn't fold the Queen 8 suited. Um, but if we're going to play weaker hands like that, then we have to try, we have to protect that range by limping stronger hands as well. But it's also good for the stronger hands to induce action. Like if, like if we sh shove that hand and, and the guy looks down and ace two off, he's not calling. But if we limp it, he might very well go for it. Um, and that's obviously as good a spot as we're going to get at this point. Uh, Jack, Queen, Sue, in a cutoff. Just shove. Probably. 
yeah. just shove. As I said, the the the, the cutoff point is twenty percent. So there's two point four out there. Our stack's effectively twelve. So anytime you're adding twenty percent or more to your stack, just shove your entire range. That's, yeah, that's a good heuristic. I like that. Yeah. Pretty soon, you can get this one through. What What are your thoughts on? Um, I had a thought about the the big blind view uh, that most clients have now. Um, which obviously like it's, it makes decisions a lot easier, especially if you're multi-tabling. I, I've certainly found it a lot easier, but I kind of have a feeling it's actually not always as helpful in satellites because you have, have the concept of like a, the target stack that you're going for. Uh, you know, for example, if, um, if there's 10 seats, a million chips in play, then you want to, the, the average stack will have a hundred thousand chips. And, you know, we would say get to about 70,000 chips, you probably got a seat locked up. Um, you can't quite easily see how far you are uh, when, there's a, when you're using the big blind view relatively. Do you, do you change that at all when you're playing satellites? Do you, that's, do you... a, that's a really good point. I've never actually thought of that. I never use the big blind view because I'm used to using my HUD or, or actually when I'm playing on a site like Party or Univet uh, that doesn't allow HUDs, I can, I can do the calculations myself. Uh, it's just something obviously I've been doing for years. So I just never bothered switching, but I've never actually thought about it, but, you, but you're actually spot on. Like the target stack is such an important concept um, that, and, 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 and taking the big blind view will obscure it. I mean, I guess you can try and do some sort of conversion, but, but then that kind of defeats the purpose because you're doing all this extra maths. Uh, so yeah, um, it's definitely not as useful in satellites. Uh, the Ace King, we're in early position here. So even though I said we're like with the Ace King offsuit on the button, or sorry, the Ace King suit on the button, we we're looking to induce action. Here we are, probably just better off sho shoving. I mean, we we can raise call it as well, um, but well now we're down to fourteen. So okay, we're not quite at the critical point yet where ICM is is starting to be massive, but it is a bigger factor than than in the previous example, uh, we're in earlier position. We don't particularly want to get into flips. So if we can show, if, if we raise ace king and a guy's gonna, you know, reshove fives and we're gonna have to call it off, that's not a great spot for us. And there are more people behind who can wake up with those kind of hands. People are not gonna go mental with ace two off suit as in the previous example against an under the gun raise. So uh, we're better off just shoving. In, in general, we should be shoving more of our range from early position and, uh, right taking the other options in later position. Right, okay, because, yeah, yeah no, that makes perfect sense. Okay. But I, I, I just, I'm pretty, I almost certainly folded this, but like 20 players left, you probably actually be considering a defense of this, or maybe a little bit stronger than King 10 off suit based on what you I said. think I would call I think I would call this if I'm honest uh, it's just we are 16 or 20 so we're sort of it's not it's not like we're going to be able to duck and dive our way to uh, into the money um, I think this is a pretty profitable spot I'm just going to check my uh, my Nash chart to see what the minimum call there for us if um, if there was no ICM, yeah, King two is the minimum call. Uh, so okay, like King King, King ten, if the guy has any sort of clue, is going to be a massively profitable call. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, I mean, that is something you'll see throughout this video. If someone shoves, I am unless I've got an absolute monster, I'm not calling at all. So I'm probably losing a little bit of equity. That's because that's good strategy in, in 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 that sort of end game period where three. Uh, one third of the players remaining get seats, but you don't want to overdo that uh, before that point. Otherwise, you'll find yourself short stacked a lot. Um, mm. You just kind of have to take suck, suck up the variance and take it. Of course, is if you know you're going to get aces two hands later, then obviously yeah. great fold. Is ace nine off a, a shove, or can, can you be more flexible with this hand? Uh, it's a shove it's a shove i don't think we want to it's not quite strong enough to raise call like in yeah. these spots you have to ask yourself if i raise what what do i think the weakest hand he'll shove is and i mm -hmm. don't think there are too many hands that ace nine are in brilliant shape against that the guy will shove um like he, okay he may, he may shove eight, ace eight maybe a seven i don't see him shoving ace two no. uh i mean he might but even if he does like it's still kind of around the point where half the hands we're inducing are better than us and half are worse. So we're better off just shoving and getting him to fold out uh, some hands that are good equity against us. 
uh, I, I go for the min raise there. It's a it's a uh, it's a five dollar tournament, so I'm, I'm absolutely... yeah. I would I I would go even further and just limp it, but um, but the min raise is fine too. Obviously, there's there's no real uh, mistake you can make here unless you click fold by mistake. I mean, uh, bottom table ace queen is uh, is is in the cut up this time, but it's a substantially stronger hand than the ace nine off. I mean, I'm, I'm, based on what we've said, I'm guessing. Uh, bet call is is decent here as well as Shepard. Yeah, bet call is bet call is decent. Uh, the fact that we're off suit makes it a little bit less attractive as a as a, as a raise because we don't want to get called as much. Uh, mm. It's pretty disastrous for us if like two or three people call. Um, well, it's not disastrous, but it's just not great. Um, and it's better for us when they fold. And and you know. The good thing about shoving hands like ace queen is like if you are shoving a lot as you are, then people will look you up with worse hands as well. Like king queen yeah. won't find the fold, ace ten won't find the fold. Ooh, early, okay. Well, we're not actually that early because it's only short-handed. Yeah, this is going to be a shove, but it's not brilliant, I don't think. Yeah, I. Uh... Did you ICMize it? I also, um, I'll show the, I also folded pocket folds under the gun uh, on the other table, which has probably got lost in the, just here. Um, I like that. I like that. Yeah, I, I, just, I just felt like, I mean, I, I do that in a normal tournament a lot of the time, to be perfectly honest, because I just, pocket folds rarely gets around the table and doesn't realize it's equity very much. I suspect that goes double in a satellite. Yeah, the only time... In the satellite, I'm always folding. And the only time I would ever play, I played it in a PKO, I guess, because uh, I, I, I would limp it in a PKO um, try and try and flop a set multi-win, get somebody's bounty that way. But I think it, even in a normal tournament, I would sometimes limp it. Uh, if I was at a table of like hyper aggros who, who, are, got, who are just going to pounce on limps, then I think the stack depth that makes a pretty good limp reshove. Uh, against a certain type of player, obviously, there there are spots where I would limp it. The plan being, if if the tighter players raise, I can just fold, and if the guys who see see a limp as a red rag to a bull, uh, if they raise, I'm going to limp reshove and. Um, mm. So the, uh, the queen the queen ten suited was just just a shove. So it's, uh... yeah, it's pretty close. It's. Yeah, but again, like the shorter we get, the more we have to take these spots because you know we're six-handed. The blinds are racing around. Uh, yeah, you, you, your, your standards kind of go like I, sp I spoke earlier about like not wanting to shove twenty-four bigs to, to to make a small margin. By the time you're down to twelve and the and the blinds are actually hitting your next hand, um, this is not a time to be spotting to, to be passing profitable shoves. I, I I'd be um, yeah. I was I was just thinking I'd probably be folding with fifteen big blinds there. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I would too. Where the inflection point would probably be? So I think twelve is more or less the twelve mm. or thirteen is more or less the uh, would be my cutoff point. And obviously, get to one. nice. Obviously, get there. Yeah. Uh, did you like to call with pocket nines? He only had about seven big lines. I seem. Yeah, to yeah, he has to call. Uh, yeah, I mean, if we if you look if you go back to IC Miser and look at your shoving range and just see how what what kind of good shape nines is going to be against most of that. Mm. Yeah, again, the, 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 the pairs in particular, the pairs are the one hands that tend to make hold their equity as calls, uh, latent satellites, because they're almost never in horrible shape and they're, they have the potential to dominate a lot. I, uh, I, I made a note on this. I color coded this, guys. My, my color coding system is basically like I'll color code them just to remember to see if they do it again and then I'll make a note. Um, I kind of thought that ace ten call there was slightly loose, um, yeah. but in hindsight, I don't think it was because the guy was quite short. Um, yeah, it was loose. It was loose if it was me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's basically what actually I surmise there. So um, I'm pretty certain I'll, I'll have folded this hand. Uh, how near are we? Um, let me just look at the chart. It's queen six off, right? Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's it is profitable uh, in chip terms, um, but again, it's one of these spots where it's not going to be massively profitable. So I'm fine with folding as well. Um, so I, I've uh, this was one I noted. Um, this is definitely a fold. Yeah, I pegged him as loose, but I still thought I. Yeah, it's just three multi way. We just have to be so much tighter. 
um, because uh, yeah, yeah, I'm not surprised. It's 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 tough. You can see how tight we have to be here. Actually, tens is a fold. Yeah, ace king, ace king off is a fold. It's, um, yeah, good. yeah. That, that's that's a really good rule of thumb. Like all all the non pairs are just terrible multi way. Um, mm. Even against like relatively wide ranges, uh, it's just like they're never very far ahead and you can be card sharing with other people and you're just going to lose more than half the time basically, which is kind of disastrous in a satellite. But but you can see the big pairs there actually do retain their equity well, Jack's plus, so. Pretty certain I may know on this player after this end. I just want to see what the what the two hands here are. He might what be stalling. What do, people, what do you think about people who stall get absolutely nowhere near the money? Um, I, uh, I, I, I think it's that to me is a sign of a satellite player who's probably a, a bit too tight and. As a general rule, it is yeah, but you can you can actually um, you can reverse that as well. If like a lot of people think that so. If you if you're doing that and then you reshove, uh, you'll get far more folds than you should. Um, it can be kind of a good level. To be honest, like I I don't actually think it's too early to start stalling here because th there are, there are two factors. It's not just the, how far we are from the money, but it's also how far we are from the final table. Because yeah. as you get nearer and nearer to the final table, you're going to be more and more short-handed, and the more blinds and antis you're going to have to pay. So if you can save even like two orbits through stalling before you make the final table. Um, you know, that can be a significant portion of your stack saved uh, from having to be posted blind. Um, so I'll often start stalling as we get towards towards the final table too, until we get to the final table, and then often on the final table, there's no point in stalling anymore. So there's uh, 15 players left on the top table. I'm way out of the money. Um, again, this is, this, is, this is one where I've been studying my 20 big blind ranges. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty certain this is profitable, um, mostly it's, because it's suited. I think a seven off is probably a fold here. Oh, a seven um, off is definitely a fold, I would imagine. Uh, uh, but again, like obviously, I've been taking way too much of a shove or fold and nothing else in between lines. Do, do, do you play his hand any differently, or, or do you not? Do you I mean, I might sometimes raise raise this hand as well, but there needs to be not too much three betting on the table. Um, yeah. It's the kind of hand which. Like a lot, a lot of the time when we raise this hand, what's going to happen is just the big blind will defend, and then we'll yeah. we'll usually win with a C bet. Um, it's also a hand which it's not a total disaster for us if it goes multi way. Yeah, it's pretty easy to know what to do against a three bet. We just fold because we only have a seven. Um, so yeah, I mean, yeah, I imagine it's a profitable shove because I know the the suited aces go up. With, Go up way in value in these spots, providing the calling yeah. ranges behind are correct. They do. Uh, I've been, I've been looking at all of them. Um, it's close, yeah. Looking. Like it's actually too close. Uh, yeah, my gut feeling was I wouldn't actually take this shove because I don't think we're making enough. Um, yeah. Like zero point zero two big blinds. Yeah, it's nice, but like, and that's kind of depending on people having the right calling ranges. If people are going to call a little bit too wide, we could suddenly become unprofitable, and it just introduces this additional element of variance. Yeah, my default here will be to just raise this hand and see what happens. Right, right. Uh, I think I get away with it. It's, um, yeah, I mean, interestingly, like ace, ace five suited is probably an even better raise, right, in this situation? Yeah, yeah, for sure. You've, uh, Actually, can you just bring up the isomizer again? Or, yeah. oh no, this is the replay. Oh yeah, you have it there. Uh, like if you look at the profitable shoving range, you can see the point about like how the suited aces go up in value, but the unsuited aces really don't. Like ace jack off isn't good here, uh, yeah. let alone ace seven off. Now that said, yeah, they're not they're not massively unprofitable. Um, but yeah, yeah. You, you... in different spots, I've seen some really really surprising charts where you'll where you know like ace ten off is a fold, but. Jack nine suited just gets there and stuff like that, depending on the yeah, strategy. yeah, it's, yeah. It's I mean the interesting thing too, looking at that is, is like even three two off. I mean it's not profitable, but it's it's only losing minus point two zero. You might think it it was it was losing more than that, 
but mm. it's one of those spots because people are usually folding that your hand doesn't in one sense doesn't matter a huge amount mm. but at the same time you don't want to overdo it because uh, I mean, it's interesting that nines the fold as well uh, mm. or not or, or, or sorry not a profitable shove um, yeah I mean, these, one of the things that um, is really interesting when you start looking at these these hand charts of what's profitable and what not what is it's just how profound the blocking effect is in satellites. Yeah, uh, blocking is huge. Yeah, probably, as, we, as we say, uh, you know, fold equity is the biggest form of. Uh, yeah, of equity. I think I think we gave the example in the book which I originally gave in my seminar that like against a tight calling range, you're better off having ace five suited than jacks. Yeah, uh, because even though jacks might have slightly more equity against the calling range, uh, you are getting called more often because yeah. uh, there's an extra ace out in the deck and, uh, and, 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 and that actually tips the balance. Yeah. Uh, so. Oh, this is interesting. Oh, this is, oh, sorry, your button. Uh, sorry, I thought the, the table uh, layout got me confused. I thought the guy had limped. Yeah, yeah this yeah. is. This is a show for sure. Yeah. yeah, there's nothing else to do here. This is going to be a profitable shove, and we don't want to limp or, or, or raise this hand. And as we just said, we have the blocker, so it's... Uh... Yeah, we have the blocker, and if he wakes up with kings, we still have a chance, so... Um, oh, wow. Yeah, I'm... I didn't even bother ICMIs in this one. It's uh, the, the, the the reason for my fold in this spot is the fact that it's basically twenty one big blinds effective. Um, yeah, I think if we ran this, it might be borderline profitable, but I still wouldn't take it. It's one of those things that we're just not making enough for the amount that we're putting in. I think there's a. I think there's a uh, that said, I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure there are regs out there who th would think it's absolute heresy to fold a seven uh, yeah. suitors in, in that spot. I mean, the seven five. You could. You could. You can actually shove if the if the guy. Uh, if our seven four, if if the guy knows how tight he's supposed to be, it's one of those spots where you can shove any two cards. I'm pretty sure because of ICM, but if the guy calls even a bit too wide, it becomes a disaster. So, yeah, I, I think most of my rationale there is like if it was se seven four can make a straight, so it, may, it boosts the equity a little bit in this hand more than some might realise, but. I think my rationale mainly for not shoving there is that he's only he's he's about to get blinded down to less than ten big blinds, and that's usually where recreational players kind of think, right? I've got to make a stand. I've got to call with something. Yeah, less. that's a good. Yeah, that that's a, that's a really good point. Like from a chip equity point of view, seven six off, I think is the bottom of the range here. But ICM, if you are playing against really good players, ICM will actually tighten the calling ranges considerably. Um, which will actually then make seven four off suit a profitable shove. But you, if you can't rely on the guy to know that, um, that that's actually I, that's actually probably a good strategy adjustment for these T dollar games, right? Because you would expect um, if this was a satellite to play in the Party Poker Million, for example, which is a marquee tournament, um, you're going to get a lot of people in there that are very excited about possibly playing in this big event and they're going to uh, sort of play accordingly and stuff. But in a T dollar satellite where it's much more weighted towards regs, um, you can probably get away with more of these uh, so-called unexploitable shoves, right? Because you ex that's, that's, it's, it's not, it still make, doesn't make it more profitable to play in them, but it's probably one adjustment that's, um, a benefit of these games that are reg heavy, you can you can shove in more spots, knowing that you're never going to get called. Is that a fair assessment? Yeah, that's a fair assessment. If if the assumption that the games are more reg heavy is true, like I have to say, my my experience of the satellites that I've played so far is that they, I mean, they might, I guess they're a little bit more reg heavy, but not still not massively reg heavy. It does feel to me that a lot of the recreations are taking shots. Uh, yeah. Because it's a new format, and you know, uh, every time there's a new format, the, rec the recs will try it out. But so, uh, I, um, I, I folded pocket fours earlier. This is in later. This position. is later position that makes it a better shove. 
I mean, yeah, as a general rule, like again, and we say this in the book, you have to be a bit tighter early or at least your shoving range changes in the sense that uh, you, you lose these types of hands. The type of hands that become bad shoves in early position are the smaller pocket pairs and the worst suited connectors. The type of hands that become okay shoves are blocker type hands like suited aces, blocker type hands mm -hmm. that have reasonable equity against tight calling ranges. In later position, you just tend to widen your widen your shoving range across the board so uh, fours is almost definitely a shove queen jack I'm, suited I'm, I'm pondering get queen suited um, yeah this is like we're, we're one seed earlier now that makes a fairly significant difference um imagine if we ran this we would still find it profitable look how we... just looking at the stacks behind yes it is borderline yeah, yeah. that's what i felt uh yeah, uh, for the, for that, given the situation, I mean, we're ten or fourteen, so like we're we still do have to play, so we don't want to be passing too many profitable spots. But this is only making point zero zero one, um, so I think the fold is fine there. Do, do, do you like? I, I, one of the reason why I don't I I shove or I fold there, and I, I don't consider playing it, is because I I don't think I'm going to know particularly. As a recreational player myself, I'm not sure how I'm going to play that post flop. I mean, would you, um, the great Daro Keeney, uh, <laughs> would you ever raise there? Uh, oh yeah, for sure. And I, and I and I would limp sometimes as well, just to mix it up. Um, yeah. Sometimes when I, I again, like when I don't have these hands that I don't feel great about shoving, but I do want to play them. If I feel I'll play better than my opponent's post flop then I'll do something else like limp or, or raise them. This, this hand is probably a better, oh, sorry, the, the, that hand is off screen now, but Queen Jacks is probably a better limp because um, we're going to fold it to a, to a raise. If we, if we, sorry, if we open it, we're folding it to a three bet. We don't have a blocker, so we're not making it, it's, it's no less likely than a random hand that we are going to get three bet. And given that we are folding it, um, it also plays very well multi-way and it plays very well against a wide range like it's great for us if the big blind has like queen seven off which he was gonna fold to the min raise but he calls and then he hits his queen uh and can't get away um so yeah i think i think i would usually limp that hand actually so i, I as we probably guessed by now i if I'm not shoving it, I'm, I'm not playing it. That's so a fine I, adjustment. If you if you if you don't feel confident in your post flop play, uh, it's it's incredibly pragmatic and it's almost certainly the best strategy adjustment you can make is just to switch to a shover fold mode. I mean, in a multi table tournament, um, short handed, I absolutely I love defending with king five yeah. suit. You can, uh, you can fold yeah, I mean, I, w I would definitely defend this, but again, it depends on on feeling. I I can play very well post flop. Um, yeah, I mean, at this point, there's we're one player away from the final table. Um, I don't particularly want to call and then, you know, hit a flush draw and then think about having to call again on the. Yeah, that's the, this is the problem. We are going to have to. Uh, yeah, and, and in fact, we're at, we're at, we're at the spot now where ICM is huge, and because he covers us, uh, that's going to affect us post flop as well. Um, this is a spot now where we should we should be stalling already, incidentally, since since the final table bubble. Yeah. The quicker we get to final table, the better for us with our stack. So, so just just out of interest, I insta I insta folded the ace four or five there. Um, a couple of reasons, but first of all, this Mike Stock player has shown himself to call quite wide. Um, if I had ace four or ace five suited, I would have almost certainly shoved it over the top of him. But I actually just don't think I have that much fold equity. Is that? Yeah, if, if uh, he's, he's open to three and a half x, so he probably have no fold equity. Uh, if often guys raise the three point five x with a hand, just to make it clear that they're not folding. Yes, um, yeah. so that's kind of what I was. That's yeah. kind of what I see that. Um, yeah. More so in satellite and in, in like final table situations and stuff like that. Yeah. I, uh, I actually, now this is a, an interesting one. I, uh, I'm quite embarrassed because I don't know how to adjust ICI, ICMizer to change the villain's calling range, but I, uh, this was a hand where I, I queen 10 off, I would have shoved, 
in a normal situation, especially five-handed. But I folded just because I felt like this uh, this guy was looking me up too wide. Yeah, I, I'm actually looking at the shoving range. If I say I'm missing a factor, and Queen Ten off is just is just below the line. Uh, yeah. We can shove Queen Jack off, and we can shove Jack Ten off. Jack Ten off is a better shove. Um, it, it's one of those spots where. Like it's a fine shove from button, and it's a fine shove obviously from the small blind. But the farther we get away from the button, the more it drops off. Um, like at this stack, that if we're on the button, uh, well, actually, queen ten off is still is still only bottom of the, of the range, so it's not a it's, it's not an amazing shove at any any spot. If we're up, if we, if we think we're up against somebody who calls too much, then we're definitely not shoving this hand. Yeah, yeah. Good, and I was I was kind of pleased that it was, yeah. it was and it's and it's borderline unprofitable as you can see even if the calling range is correct. Um, but by contrast, I'm almost certainly shoving sixes here. Um, yeah. In yeah. fact, no, I don't shove sixes. I, uh, you left zero point three behind. I leave a little bit behind because now. Um, Stalling is a factor in this. Right. In this yeah. Problem. Like it. So it's long as you don't do the more man and misclick if somebody sho shoves. No, in. no. <laughs> I'm always very careful um, yeah. when I do this. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I know where my my hand is. I know where the mouse is over the. And you have a good button. connection, obviously. Yeah. I mean, I mean, just uh, for people that aren't aware of what I'm doing, like I, I, I've effectively shoved anyway. Like everybody knows I'm committed to this hand, but by leaving a tiny bit behind. Um, I achieve two extra things. Uh, one thing is that I get to slow down the hand a little bit even more when if someone if someone comes over the top of me, uh, I can you know drag it out a little bit more as we're approaching the ball. Um, if we had a guy with say 19, 20 big blinds uh, just acting before him, they'd have to re-raise to, to get me all in, which would make them vulnerable against his big stack. And this is what Dara refers to as steel fold equity from the, uh, the chip yeah. leader. Do you want to elaborate on any of that? Yeah, very much so. Uh, like when, when we shove, they have to worry about the big blinds. Uh, it's one of those spots where you're actually, sh you, you, you're better off shoving in, in, in all the spots into the chip leader because everybody, for when you're coming from early position, because everybody between you and him has to worry about the chip leaders uh, and, and not just your stack. Now it's not that big a factor here because the guys are effectively committing anyway against your stack if they go with their hand. But if, let's say there's a guy sitting there with 30 big blinds, he's in a much worse spot now and has to call much tighter because he has to worry about the big blind waking up with a hand. Um, there is a third factor to it, which is more minor, but it comes back to the stalling aspect. Given that we're, we're stalling here and we're trying to waste time uh, so that we get to the final table as quickly as possible, particularly when we're under the gun, because if, if the bubble, somebody busts on the other table, uh, we might actually save an entire big blind and that's, that's obviously really good for us. But yeah. when we do this, it often just confuses people and they take five or 10 seconds longer to make their own decision, uh, which is yeah. obviously very good for us in a spot where we're trying to stall. Yeah. And now and then, um, you do get someone who will just call um, and you know even if they're, if they're the ones to close the action and then as you know it may only work one in a hundred times but every now and then you can just put that a third of a big blind in another pot bet and get a get a fold uh, for someone who's not paying attention yeah that yeah yeah for sure that happens and and when they do call obviously we're committed but it also means we get to waste more time post flop um, yes. like if they check we can very slowly check and then see the turn and then we can very slowly check again and uh, and actually, sometimes there's a, the, 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 there's an, an additional advantage that we sometimes they'll check it down, and we actually have the worst hand, which they would have called if we'd shoved anyway. And okay, we're down to zero point three big blinds, which isn't great, but we're not completely out. Yeah, I, I found it to be quite effective when you're the short stack with a decent bounty in a PKO as well, because um, it it means that some people that would otherwise isolate you are scared to do so because the uh, you've just done it into the big stack. Precisely, um, precisely. Um, yeah, I, I'm pretty certain I folded here. I don't think I ICMized it, but... Um, yeah, I'm fine with folding here. I, I, I'm, I'm not too worried about the ICMizer output because even if it's profitable, it's not going to be massively profitable and it's just one of those downside versus upside spots where going dropping down to, what will it be? 
six point eight big blinds is pretty terrible. Um, I mean, winning the extra. Oh, oh, okay. Well, once once the button comes in, it's clearly a fold. But um, if, even if the button had hadn't come in, um, I would have been okay with folding. I think there. And I uh, at that point, I um, uh, I put my little pink thing around him to uh, to indicate that I think he called a little bit too wide there. So I, I, as far as I'm concerned, I've got two quite loose players. To yeah, the right. yeah. If he's calling with king queen, that's that seems too loose. Uh, yeah, the ace-jack suitor we've effectively shoved, which is fine, obviously. And now, yeah, so now you have made the final table, which is good. Yeah. If um, if you agree with my reads on the two tables, who are on two players, sorry, who are quite loose callers here, like uh, this seems like a nightmare table position for me. It's terrible, yeah. It's still, those and 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 they're both stacked, so. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm just getting. I mean, the only like I'm getting no chips through, and next to them is someone who's got like you know half the chips basically. Um, so, kind yeah, of the only thing I would say is given our situation here, like there are three guys, just two other guys roughly are stuck, and then everybody else is comfortably clear of us, and and we are still five off the thing, so we can play pretty much close to JPV, and if we get called, we get called, but yeah. we are going to have to take our spots. Yeah, like the day seven will is definitely a spot we should take. Uh, yeah, like you said, it's a, it's a, at this point it's a cheap EV game. I mean, that's that's somehow. Sold. I mean, that, that's one of the most interesting things uh, I learned from working with yourself on the book like i i knew i knew icm i mean i knew icm quite well i i knew that in satellites you sometimes have to fold aces but one of the things that i think was a bit surprising and i think other people would as well is noticing when icm isn't a factor and that is more off, more often than people think in a satellite yeah um, most notably when you've just You've got so much ground to make that you know you've not you're not got the luxury of of waiting out other people unless they're really really bad. Yeah, an interesting spot that could have risen that last time we looked at is if Watsky the eight point five big blind uh, stack had shoved, we're probably supposed to go with our hand because he's so short, and we get the double whammy of knocking him out and getting his chips uh, if if, if, if we call off. No, sorry, the the ace seven that you okay, shoved. So. I'm saying if Watsky had Watsky had shoved from the cutoff, um, it, that, that's probably a call for us. Yeah. Uh, it's 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 interesting with the king queen. Like that might be a full an ICM fold uh, for him because well, I guess no, I guess he's not he's not in one of the. Yeah, one he's, of his, not, he's not locked up. He's not going to. See he's, he's far from locked up. Yeah, so it's actually fine. His call. The king six suited is probably a profitable shove. Um, but again, not very much, so it's probably a spot we can pass. Shove the fives there, I think. Um, oh, well, I'm that's... Yeah, it's going to be a just a show. There's nothing else we can do with this hand. Or, well, yeah, leave, leave a small amount behind. Uh, now, uh, like, because uh, so we've uh, we've picked up a, a reasonable stack, uh, cuts of the A seven. We've got eighteen big blinds. Um, pocket jacks is um, you know we don't want to get we te we don't want to get looked up by like just a raggy or something like that. So I tend to shove there, but because we're not quite. Guaranteed a seat. Do you do you ever bet call? I would sometimes. It's table dependent. I think shoving would be my default play if I don't know about the players or or if they're playing relatively normally. Um, because, like the thing about when you have players that are too loose, um, they can also make bad calls when we shove. Like they may call off here with pocket eights or something. Um, so we don't necessarily have to 
to raise to get the chips in against those hands. But it's good for us if we if we if we get king queen to fold. Uh, and similarly, if the big blind is, is the type who might defend, um, you know, a lot of the time jacks we're going to be looking at over cards. So, uh, yeah, I think I would the sh- sh- the show would be the default. But at some tables, I would raise call if there's just guys are just uh, if there's a crazy amount of three betting going on or reshoving. I would just fold this. Yeah, it's it's, it's a really pretty hand, and at, at 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 a shallower stack depth, we we'd have a very profitable shove. But um, this spot ICM, um, while it flops well, the stacks aren't aren't deep enough for for good implied odds. So uh, I, I made a mistake. I'm glad, I'm glad you made that noise because yeah. <laughs> I was worried that I. Um, I was too quick uh, in my decision here. But let's, uh, let's play it out in real time. Hmm. What, what, what would you say there as, uh, before I show you what the uh, solver says? Yeah, I'm just looking at, this, at the stacks because we're far from locked up. And mm. AS10 is the kind of hand that does really well against the range because he's going to shove probably almost any ace. Any ace, yeah. And we're going to be ahead of all the things. Okay, I'm, I'm looking at stacks like Hornet is locked up. So effectively, there are two seats and we are in third spot for those two seats. Mm. And we're also not dead if we're called. Ugh, probably probably just about side call, but I'm really not sure. Yeah, there, there was another factor at play in this one as well, which is um, maybe pushed me towards folding was I kind of felt these two players might get it in against each other when they got no reason to. Oh, that's well, that, yeah, that's, that, that is a, that is a very good point. Where, so like, um, if I felt that, um, I was going to have to accumulate more chips, um, then I I'd jump at the chance to call with that. But because I kind of felt that he would shove and he would definitely call it in a big blind, small blind situation. Um, that marginally, that, that was definitely uh, influenced in my decision. That's a factor, yeah. But another factor is that we we still have a shit seat because we still have those two guys yeah. behind us who are likely to call our shoves too wide. So we, we, we won't have as many profitable shoves from late position. Yeah, we should take any small edge that we have, perhaps. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it, it was a call. Yeah. Wow, it's more profitable than I thought. Yeah, it's just, it dominates. Again, if we could look at his shoving range, which I guess we can't, but he's supposed to be pushing 25%, okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. so against 25% range. Yeah, the big aces just do really well in those spots because they dominate so much of the range. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm pretty certain I'll have fallen at this. Just because of these two guys acting behind. Uh, ooh. Yeah, the Queen Jack suited. Hmm. I mean, it, it is a real worry that those guys are too are so loose, and then the button as well can probably feels like he can call fairly wide, and the two blinds are short, so they're maybe going to call a bit wider. Yeah, I think it's probably a, it's normally a profitable show, but I'm I'm okay with folding because there's a there's a strong chance we're getting called wider. This is one of the things about satellites; like you have to do a risk assessment, not just on what the correct play is, but how likely the, the, the incorrect play is and how bad that will be for us if, if, if it happens. And like there yeah. are spots where like if everybody's playing correctly, we are we have a slightly profitable shove, but if people are going to call too wide, it suddenly becomes a very unprofitable shove. And mm-hmm. so if, if there's a high possibility that that's got, of that second scenario happening, then we should fold. Yeah. So on the, uh, on the top table, I pocket six is uh, 500. I was the second lowest stack, nine yeah. nines, looked to buy. Nines, 
relatively standard I suspect. Yeah, it's one of those spots where again, like the bigger pairs hold their equity pretty well. So he obviously feels you're shoving a lot of worse hands. Out of interest, all right. Well, I'm not playing this hand, obviously, but what did no, stupid game con this this so uh, um this player uh min raises here i should have icmized this one because but it's, it's come to me more um what is your reach of range typically in a spot like this I mean, this, if, if this is a normal tournament and ICM isn't a factor, this is definitely in the reach of range. But yeah, yeah, That's the problem, the, the pro, the, yeah, it, 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 it's kind of the same um, same general criteria apply in these spots. Uh, how as uh, as to how shoving ranges, for example, change in early position. Like mm -hmm. when we're in early position, um, we still have to go on shoving a lot of hands. But certain types of hands become worse shoves, and certain types of hands become better shoves, uh, and that's mostly down to the blocker effect, um, and also having equity against tight ranges. It's the example we gave earlier about like Ace Four suited being better than Jacks in, in in those types of spots. Same thing applying reshows because in reshows we don't want to get called, so therefore having a blocker is great, and, mm. and not having a blocker as, as as in this spot is not great. And similarly, against if the, the the calling range is going to be tighter, or at least should be tighter, because of the ICM. But that means then we it's important to have hands that have some sort of equity against a tight calling range. And if mm. like if the guy calls us with queens, kings, or aces, we're pretty much toast. Yeah. But if we had like ace rag here, we'd be fine against kings or queens. Uh, right. Well, not fine, but we'd be better shape. And yeah. we would have a blocker against aces, making it a lot less likely he has the aces. So it's it's one of those spots where ace four suited is a better reshove than queen ten suited. Um, yeah, I mean, so yeah, I mean, I, this hand would disappear from the shoving range. Uh, sorry, the reshoving range in a satellite near the bubble. I, I remember thinking about it at the time because like everyone else is shoving at this stage, and this guy's min raising, uh, you know, for ten percent of his stack, and that's usually a sign to me in a satellite that somebody doesn't play many satellites just because they're not maximizing the fold equity, even in like a short handed spot like this. Yeah. Yeah, that's that. That's true, but we we can't. Re when you're up against a bad player, they might make two two mistakes in the in the hand, which is to raise it in the first place and then to call it off. So uh, this, this is a spot now where I would go for it. There's just so much out there, uh, yeah. and there's and there's a really good chance it's getting true, and we have and we have a blocker. Um, yes. And yeah, this is. I'm pretty certain I do this. So uh, I was not concerned about this player because we've seen him. Yeah. So I, I think know what he's doing. I was slightly uh, concerned with this player. Um, this was this was the reason why I think I paused for a while um, because he has been shoving like in a, like a typical satellite reg would do, and now for him to raise under the gun like that, yeah, is kind of, I kind of think well, that, if that was me, I'd have aces right there. Yeah, but um, then we have we have a blocker to aces, so it's mm. it's it's way yeah, less so likely. I mean, he could he can have kings as well, which is not going to be brilliant for us, but uh, not terrible. I mean, you're praying for him to have like jacks or tens. Uh, pray, but yeah, but yeah, he shouldn't be inducing those hands. But yeah, I mean, we're really praying for the fold here, but we're also going, well, we should have some sort of equity if we get called. Now, in hindsight, before we even ICMIs it, I, I should have left a third of an ante behind, just <laughs> but, uh, less of a factor when it's the only table that's left. Well, there's no, st yeah, I mean, stalling's not really a thing anymore because we're, there's, no, there's no other table that, that can be playing faster or slower than us. Um, so I tend to do it. Oh, wow. That's an awful raise call by him. Yes. That I, I really was bad. That I, is I, really bad. So, uh, and interestingly, Ace Queen off is um, very close, but not quite there. Um, As a, yeah, that's yeah. probably, the, yeah, again, uh, what's his opening range? His opening range is supposed to be 23%. I guess if he calls wider, it's worse for us, though, yeah. yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, even though it's minus 0.13 there in theory, I would still do it in practice because I think the second guy is effectively dead money. Like, mm. I, I'm pretty sure his range, yeah, like, look how tight his range is supposed to be. It's supposed to be 8.3%. There's no way that guy's only, that guy's only calling top 8.3% hands. Uh, no, that guy's got jack 10 in his range of lock. Yeah, there's no, and there's no way he's, uh, it's, it's unlikely he's trapping aces or kings, which he's supposed to if he, if he, if, if he has a calling range there. So, so I think he's effectively dead money. So I think that, that pushes it over to being profitable. Uh, and again, this is one of those spots where it's probably profitable to shove if everybody plays correctly behind, but I wouldn't trust them to. So, I would, yeah, yeah I mean, I, uh, the, the, the shove is theoretically fine, obviously. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't feel great about it, but... Um, yeah, I didn't feel great about it, um, on, uh, uh, which is why. Uh, it's actually, you know... Not even close. Like, if it was suited, I, I would have been. You, 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 did you did you have ace two off? I thought you were slightly better than that. Ace three off. Ace three off. Okay. Yeah. yeah so minus zero point zero nine. Yeah, oh, it's. No, actually, I surmised it wrong. Um, yeah, it's fine. Then. It's it's fine though because we can see the rest of the range. Ace three off is only slightly better. Yeah. It, yeah, I did have that kind of instinctive gut feeling. Oh, I don't really like this. Um, and this is an interesting spot, like we mentioned before. Like um, ace ten off is out of the range. Jack wow, Tennessee. yeah, that's really striking, actually. Yeah, I, I remember. In fact, when I met, when I talked about that probably twenty minutes ago, I think it was literally this hand that made me think about that. Yeah, uh, a, a, a good way to think about that is that, like, if everybody's playing correctly, there's actually not too much difference between Ace Two Off and Ace Ten Off because Ace Nine Off is not going to call us or shouldn't call us. Right. So therefore, uh, like the the hands are going to call us are going to be better than both Ace Ten and Ace Deuce. Um, so there's not a huge difference. I mean, it's obviously, a bit of a fallacy. it's probably a bit of a fallacy to say that Ace Ten can make a straight because you've got to make a straight yeah, much, yeah. Well, you can see Ace Ten is a lot better than Ace. Eight. In fact, Ace Nine is only a, is only very Ace Ten Ace Eight off is as bad as Ace Two off, which is quite interesting. Yeah. And Ace Nine off is only slightly better, but then Ace Ten off becomes significantly better than both those two. Um, yeah, it's it, like. I guess an important heuristic to take away in these spots is that you, because fold equity is, is vital, you want to be shoving wider in late position. And by late position, I pretty much just mean the button and the small blind yeah. um, because you're not going to get called too much, but you're, you're, you are kind of sticking your neck out the window and hoping nobody calls when you shove this hand. And you're, mm. you are going to be in terrible shape against the calling range. Um, so when I see him as a factor, uh, yeah, these hands disappear. Yeah. But the the Jack Ten suited, the King Ten suited. It's just because we can we can dog them really like in, in better ways. We we we, be, we can we can flip against the pairs that might call, and we can we block queens, we block kings in some spots, and we've got the suitedness and straightness about them, right? Yeah, the, 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 there's two kind of mental checklists I find can be quite useful in these games, which is like when I ha when I have a hand like Ace Two Off in this seat, the first thing I ask myself is like. Obviously, I'm shoving this on the button, but would I feel great about it? And the answer is no, I wouldn't. Right. Uh, like I feel, the, I feel, yeah, it's a shove, but I'm not. I'm not like, oh yes, ace two off, let's go. Uh, whereas like ace jack off, ace queen off, I'm very, very happy to shove those on the button. And you know, I think I, I think I'll be in great shape if called. So when you move away from the button, then that makes that means that if if we're not even that happy shoving on the button, it becomes a much worse shove uh, in, in this seat. Um, that's that that sort of uh yeah that's kind of a big mental trick i i use yeah, to try yeah, and that's, evaluate that's, these spots in game that's very useful i mean like you know my heuristic clearly in a session would be is if i actually made a point of isomizing the hand it probably means it was you know a fold would have been fine because it's yeah i wonder <laughs> yeah yeah there's there's, again, like remembering that fold equity is, is the crucial thing. The more players we have to get to, the more players can wake up with a hand. So um, that's why we kind of stick to shoving very wide on the button or at a push to cut off. But by the time we move back to the hijack, we should be a lot tighter. Yeah, now this is going to be a shove for sure. How much thirsty, how much this guy make a bad call now? No. Yeah. 
pretty certain I don't have a decision to make because I didn't actually see my agent. Uh, this, yeah, I'm pretty certain I just fold this. Yeah, it's it, it might be borderline profitable, but there's no point in taking the risk. Now this is one. I, this is another one I picked out. Um, Ooh, yeah, this is this is interesting now because we have that blocker that we wanted to have before. This guy seems to be too loose. Yeah, I think I'd go for it here, just because I I I think if if this was one of the best bears in the world, uh, I'd be less a lot less inclined to go for it. But I think this guy's just opening too wide. Um, he's going to have too many raised folds and. I mean, he might make a stubborn call, but it's not the worst thing in the world, I guess, when we base 10. Yeah, that's a, I think that's a good adjustment there. Um, I, I think it, uh, yeah, see, it, it is unprofitable if he's playing correctly, but actually yeah, it's fine. For anyone who's watching, this is just the, uh, this is done GTO style. This is not done based on the reads. Uh, yeah, again, like, woo, the, it, it, if you look uh, bottom left, the guy's only supposed to be opening, I think, what was the percentage? Can you bring that back? The icing miser. He's only supposed to be opening 15% uh, to hands. I'm pretty sure he's opening yeah, wider uh, than that. Yeah, I'd say he'd be folded. He's probably opening like 25% of his hands. Yeah. He's probably folding uh, everything uh, in this quadrant here uh, and the pairs. And that means um, he has all these, all of these um, raise folds that a normal player doesn't have, and that that will make it profitable. Like the GTO is great, but you don't want to stick religiously to it. You do want to be exploiting, and these are good spots. Like you picked up a nice pot there by basically picking up on the fact that the guy is just too loose. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like I, I probably in, if I suspected this guy was a decent satellite reg, I'd probably just get rid of Ace Ten. Yeah, yes, the same. Yeah. Even though it's tempting, uh, my gut feeling was it probably isn't quite good enough. I mean, the the conventional wisdom is usually you know go with GTO when you have no reads. And uh, don't when, when you do. Um, I, re I remember you uh, answered a question by Colin Moshman, you know, like, how profitable would you be if you literally went for the GTO line every single time in a satellite? Uh, do you, you want to kind of elaborate on that a little bit? Because it's, it's yeah, really it's, it's one of those spots. We've kind of touched on this before where, like, the GTO line works providing everybody is playing correctly behind you. But there are spots where, you know, you have a spot which is only making a small amount of money as, as, as a shove or, or a reshove if everybody has the correct calling ranges. But then if you do reject the ranges in IC, IC Miser or, or Holder Resources Calculator, suddenly you find it becomes really unprofitable. Um, so it's, it's, it's kind of a risk assessment of how likely it is that people are going to make those bad plays. And if they do make those bad plays, there's no point in sort of going, oh, well, you know, they made the mistake. I didn't. I, I, I made the correct move. You have to anticipate how likely it is that they will make those mistakes. Um, you know, that, that that whole chapter we have in our book, Adjusting for Imperfection. It's important to realize that when they make a mistake, we can end up losing a lot of money. And, ev and even if they don't make a mistake, we're not making that much money. So it's better, discretion is a better part of valor there and just don't take the spot. It's going to be ICM fold. We're actually, yeah, it's quite interesting now. Hornet has kind of, well, I guess he hasn't come back. I guess the blinds have just gone up. That's what's happened. But he's still relatively clear, and the rest of us are competing for the, the other two spots. Now, here we go. This, uh, contrary to my uh, note on him and my read on him, the, he hasn't actually played that many hands, probably because the bigger stack is behind him, so he's not had much chance to. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, people change. Like when they, when they have a big stack, they often splash around, but then they 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 become more circumspect when they're knocked back into the pack. So, so we, um, we we have a reasonable read that this guy is quite loose aggressive. He's shoved under the gun. Yeah, um, I'm st I'm, st I'm still not calling uh, for yeah, some reasons. Yeah, like, I, mean, uh, I think the question, again, the useful mental trick here is to try to imagine the, the, the worst hands that he's shoving. Like, is he shoving AS10, 
quite possibly. He's shoving ace nine. Well, now we're starting to have serious doubts. Is he really shoving 21 big blinds for ace nine, with ace nine? Um, uh, yeah. King Queen's not great for us because it's almost a flip. So we really need to think about the hands that we're dominating. We know for sure he's shoving ace king and ace queen. Uh, yeah. So that, that's two hands that, 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 that dominate us. We, we think he might shove ace 10 but we don't think he's going to shove ace nine. So at, at best, it's going to be one hand we're dominating. Um, yeah. You know, maybe, maybe there are some suited aces in there at some frequency as well, but it's, but it is 21 big blinds. I mean, you know, even maniacs don't shove. Uh, yeah, and two. I was thinking, well, definitely one of the things that um, uh, influenced my decision was that, that he was shoving, trying to, having to get it through past this player that dominates him, um, who, who has been pretty much tied though, to be fair. Um, I mean, if Leonardo was shoving 20 big blinds here, I think I'd have a decision. Uh, if I'm yeah, you right. would have a decision for sure, because you can imagine him shoving a lot of worse aces. It's, it's, it, it'd be kind of similar to the uh, the ace-10 spot previously. I think, I think I'm patting myself on the back for how quickly I folded. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah that's, a, that, that's always a good sign. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, there are spots where as you improve as a player, like you think are close and then you realize aren't close. And when you start making really quick decisions, um, that's a sign that you've kind of taken on board. Oh, wow, look, look how bad that is. Yeah. Minus 2.31. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Now, maybe maybe the guy is wider than 12%, but mm -hmm. even if he is, it's probably not going to make a massive difference. Yeah, wow. Well, even ace-queen off is really bad. Ace-queen suited is pretty bad too. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I was, uh, I, I, I did pat myself on the back. Um, for that particular one. Yeah, just just on a side note, it's interesting to think about the the um, the relevance of this from moving from satellites to normal tournaments. Like if you think on, on, on final tables in spots like that, people would often make the comment, oh, well, I called off because the next page jump wasn't big and it's all about the top spots. Well, mm. we are seeing a spot here now where the next page jump is zero. Uh, the yeah. difference between sixth and fifth is zero, and and it's also true that all the money's in the top spots, the top three spots, and yet it's a massive mistake to to fold. To, sorry to call, um, and yet people will make those calls justifying it as playing for the win or whatever uh, in, yeah. in in normal tournaments. But actually, it's a huge mistake in normal tournaments as well. Uh, like once I see them as a factor, all the same principles apply, and that's one of the things about when you study satellites or you know if you if you read our book. It's important to realize that our book is basically essentially an ICM primer in disguise. Uh, yeah. ICM happens to be at its most extreme in satellites, and but but really the same principles apply to any any situation where ICM is big. For example, final table of a of a normal tournament. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like like I it took me almost two hours to bring it up, but I uh, you know I had a bit of a win myself of l lately where I. Uh, I won forty and a half thousand dollars coming second in a PKO that I had no right being in, even entering. At the, <laughs> I sat, I sat in obviously. And one of the things that really, really helped me was that working on the book, it improved my PKO game by default, just because of how um, applic applicable, uh, you know, learning ICM and satellites is to to any form of poker that has ICM. Even even forms of poker that have no ICM, you, you kind of appreciate them a bit more like a spin and go or a cash game. So yeah, yeah I completely agree with that. I think yeah. I've got better at ICM. Uh, I presume I'll just shove this one. Yeah, this is this is for sure a shove. Yeah, we're, we're now at the spot where we definitely don't want to be doing anything other than shoving. So maybe if we get dealt to aces, it might be slightly different. But every other hand, we're just going to want to shove because uh, we don't want to be inducing action. Yeah, we're in a double or nothing at this stage, really. Yeah, we? yeah I see. Oh, nice. Nice quick fold there. This is the kind of hand which obviously we've seen goes way up in as a shove. So yeah, let's just shove it. We're not going to be thrilled if we're called, but we have that additional equity of the suitedness and uh, we have the blocker. So we can't just sit here folding. So when we get this type dealt this type of hand, we just have to kind of go for it. Yep. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's, that's pretty standard. Ace five the guy is so short, he's kind of has to go with an ace. And the and as I've said before, the big pairs are really good in these spots because they just dominate way more of the range. That would have been a fold even if that hadn't happened. Obviously, oh, yeah. we're not uh, we're not going to try and play out of get cute and play out of position. Um, yeah, bizarre kind of bizarre raise call, but. If this comes around, it's interesting because I mean, we, we this guy is definitely playing suboptimally, but at the same time, we can't give him a walk, so we would have to just suck it up and shove. Yeah, yeah. Because they were folding now. I guess he just went make we went to make tea. <laughs> Wow, I don't like that shove with the ace eight. I have to say, that's very. That's one of those spots where, like, okay, you pick up the blinds, brilliant, but like, you're taking a bit too big of a risk. Oh, this is a nice spot now. Uh, now, uh, one of the fact, like, I actually was pondering calling here. Uh, yeah, I mean, we could do our hand is strong enough, and that guy is a bit is is playing suboptimally enough. He might go mental and just go for it. Uh, I, I don't think I did in the end, and I think the reason why I didn't do it in the end is because um, uh, this guy is in this exact spot before I had ace queen, um, so I kind of thought he might look me up. Um, there's, an, th th there's another factor as well, which is like it's the big blind will will will, will call a lot of the time if we just call, and the small blind might even call, and like ace is four away, not not going to win even half the time, so. Uh, 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 I'm pretty certain I just, just yeah. for it. Uh, yeah, yeah, and we saw him snap off with his queen before, so he's going to make some bad calls. I think, yeah, I think I'm pretty certain. Had that previous time not played out, I'm pretty certain I would have been. Uh, happy, especially because I'm five of five at this stage, I, I, I'm quite happy to. Uh, yeah, yeah, we 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 do still have to accumulate. Now we know the history with this guy with the uh yeah this is definitely a shove against this guy it'd be close against a normal guy i'd probably still go with the tens is just mm. just the kind of i mean i know we don't have a blocker but we do have pretty good equity although i mean maybe tens isn't a shove against a normal player against this guy it's a yeah. slam dunk shove. I'm, I'm, again, I'm glad you said that because this actually wasn't an easy decision for me in fact i think you might see me um double check my position yeah and, uh, under this from for a while yeah it's, it's quite interesting because like i mean harness no longer even locked up now so oh wow we went into kings that's, <laughs> yeah. that's kind of brutal um yeah that's un that's just unlucky uh so i am um, I, I genuinely might have passed this hand um had there not been a history of me uh being able to take him off of hands and yeah um, i was strong out so i actually um this was one of the few where, um, so I ran this in ICIZA to begin with, and amazingly it was a, it was yeah, a uh, Yeah, yeah, often jacks is the line in these spots. Uh, yes, like, that's, ten, yeah. Tens is a super strong hand, but it doesn't have a blocker, and uh, it's kind of the inverse of the way we said, like against tight calling ranges, like when you see his hand, you much, you, you kind of wish you had his four suited. Hmm. When you see kings, when you, when you, when you, when you, when you're running into tight calling ranges, suddenly hands like tens and even jacks go way down in value, um, and hands like ace four suited go up in value because at least they have some sort of equity when they run into kings. Yeah. Um, so this is, um, so yeah. this is, I mean, you look at that, you nailed it because ace four suited and ace five suited are in the shoving yeah. range. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. The, the ability to make straights and flushes uh, adds enough to the equity, and the blocker effect is huge. Yeah. So I am. Um, uh, because it's I interesting was... it's interesting actually if you look at it that even like pick a bad suited ace even ace six suited which is like the worst suited ace mm. uh, is not quite as bad as tens in this spot yeah and I genuinely 
that wasn't an easy decision for me. I, I know I would have folded in some spots. So I, but I, my, my reasoning was, was only because I thought he would fold a lot. So I actually did learn how to uh, change his calling range. I, was, I wasn't able to, uh, sorry, his opening range. And it just... There we go, yeah. Yeah, that's the, that's the, um, the crucial point. He's probably also opening wider than, uh, than he's supposed to as well. So he probably has even more raise folds than we think, which probably pushes it towards... But when yeah. you wide the calling range, those X4 and X5 suits stop being profitable yeah. shoves. Kind of, it actually confirms your point, really. Yeah. Is, uh, it should only be... Uh, so that was the final hand of the mm. satellite. And then, obviously, you've never actually watched me play a satellite before. So my only question... Um, now that you know the book was about six months ago that we released it, is like, like do you have any um, uh, useful critiques of my game going forward? Like, I clearly I was playing like a shovel fold bot for the most part, which I've I've probably overly embraced as a solid strategy. I suspect I need to put a little bit more of creativity in my game. Yeah, and have more. I think that's a good that's a good adjustment if you are. If you feel outskilled after the flop, now I don't think you would necessarily be outskilled from what I've seen of these players. Um, so yeah, I, I would, I would say going forward, try and expand your strategy out of just push fold. Now, any like fairly inexperienced recreational players watching, I think, basically do as Barry has done in this video. It's a very good adjustment while you're learning the game or while you're improving your post flop play. But f where Barry is now, I would say you can definitely play. Um, I think you. I think you won't be outskilled post flop. So what I would do is I would start incorporating more limping and raising into your game, um, particularly in late position. So that means you don't have to fold hands like queen eight suited on the button anymore. And it also means that when you have ace king suited, you can try and induce action rather than just shove and um, you know, be slightly sl slightly happy but not thrilled when they both fold. Um, when you make that adjustment, often you'll find in the short term that your results will actually get worse because first of all, you're introducing an, an additional element of variance. And secondly, it'll take you a while to get used to dealing, you know, to knowing what to do when you've limped queen eight suited on the button and the flop comes ace eight deuce or mm -hmm. the flop comes king queen four uh, or you flop a flush draw or something like that. So it'll take a while for your post flop game to kind of improve uh, and work out, work, come up to the standard that it needs to be. You will also maybe feel that you're making you're giving yourself more difficult decisions and making it more difficult on yourself. But, but you know, the, the goal of poker is to play um, as profitably as you can, not to, not to just avoid difficult decisions. Um, mm -hmm. And in the long term, any improvements you can make in your post flop play in both normal satellite in, in normal satellites, or sorry, in satellites will tra will also translate into uh, normal tournaments. And it's actually very important to be able to play sort of 20 big blinds when I see him as a factor uh, to, to play post lap well. So the practice that you get in satellites will stand you in normal tournaments as well. Yeah, I mean, while I've got you here, like I, I, I know for a fact um, my biggest overall leak is post flop play 20 to 30 big blinds. Um, you know, spots where you, I start telling myself, Ah, I may as well shove this because I don't want to bet and then get then hit a flop and then have to fold and stuff like that. Um, you know, roughly speaking, like what, what would you say is a good battle plan for someone wanting to improve in those spots? And I'm thinking, like, obviously, getting better players to review my hands is, I'd say, one of the single best ways to do that. That's a big way. That's a big one too. I mean, you, you can also go the solver route and just uh, like run a lot of spots in solvers and see 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 the way you're supposed to play. Uh, the, the, the one overarching um, thing, uh, principle I, I guess I could give you at that sort of stack depth is that um, equity, equity denial becomes more important. It's more, it's more important to win the pot 
So, you know, when you flop top pair, when, you, when you're 200 big blinds deep, you're never going to want to get it in with like a weakish top pair. Like, let's say you've raised queen eight suited on the button and the flop has come queen 10 four. Yeah. But, but, but in a wide range versus wide range situation, you can very happily get that in on the flop. Uh, mm. Similarly, if you've, if you've defended that type of hand and you flopped a pair, you just check raise all in or check raise commit. Um, that's, that's going to be fine. So in a sense, your, your um, decisions become easier because it, it becomes more important to, to deny equity to opponents. So, mm. and you know, if you're, if you're beaten, you're going bust anyway. Uh, yeah. because you know, you, if you, if you flop a weak top pair out of position, if the guy has you beaten, he's betting all three streets and getting you in by the river. Uh, yeah. and at the same time, you can't be folding top pair in the heads of pot. So, uh, yeah, the more practice you get, the more you'll start to realize these principles. I mean, like a really good rule of thumb, which I can't remember who taught me this early on, but, um, in a wide range situation, like blind versus blind, or blind versus button, top pair is good enough to, to go all three streets with, middle pair is good enough to go two streets with, and bottom pair is good enough to usually just go one street with it. Even if you, even if you just stick to that as a general principle, I think um, mm. that will, uh, like it's, it doesn't apply in all cases. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying that like eight deuce on a 10, nine, eight board is, 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 is always a call or 10 deuce is good enough to go three streets on that board but as a general principle on like fairly normal boards that's that's a good way to think about it i like, I like that heuristic as well and then of course you could if you went if you got top pair on the first street you, you bet and get called and then the turn brings something that makes your hand not top pair anymore you know you can potentially adjust and just yeah you can always adjust obviously uh but but again like because equity and all becomes important like when we're when we're super deep we might not want to stack off with ace 10 on a 10 high board that has lots of draws on it but on a but when we're shallow, we just check raise and try and get it in now. Um, uh, and then we don't have to worry about what happens if a queen or a king comes uh, on the next street. Um, um, so yeah, it's just pl play your made hands more aggressively um, when you're when you're relatively shallow post-flop. Okay. Well, uh, maybe the next video will be uh, why the hell did you limp that Barry as the title? <laughs> and, uh, go forward. But, um, no, this has been lots of fun. Thank you, Dara. I, we should have probably done this a long time ago, uh, but for people watching, if you want to you know, leave comments under the video, if you found this helpful, you've got questions, if, uh, if there's a decent response, we, we, we might do another one of these. So um, yeah, thank you, Dara. And, uh, my pleasure. And well done on your recent uh, score. I think it's probably bigger than any of my PKO scores. So for the moment, you, I did, uh, I did that. You, you, you're the PK, I'm sure you did, yeah. Maybe I'm the PKO expert. You're, you're probably the PKO expert now, yeah. Well, as I said at the, um, as I said immediately after um, coming second uh, on Twitter, that I, I pretty much Jamie Golded the, the tournament. So <laughs> I'm, I'm not expecting another one of those results anytime soon. But, yeah, um, it's, still, it's still a nice feeling to have, no doubt. It was, yes. It was... Um, I uh, although, although I, I've never known the um, the stress of waiting for a big cash out to arrive in my, <laughs> my account before, so that was. Fun. At least it was on one of the more reputable sites. It wasn't. Uh, there are certain sites I won't name them, obviously, but there are certain sites you you, you might no, be no, sweating it. I, I will say, big up to Party Poker. I I withdrew. Well, I say I withdrew. I um, I uh, I got ten grand of it and went to withdraw it immediately and accidentally went to the deposit section. So I almost deposited $10,000 into my account <laughs> celebration. Uh, but no, to be fair to Pipe Poker, the, the money was in my account um, within half a day. So I would, uh, it, was, it was a good week. Uh, yeah, it's definitely one of the cool. better sites on, the, on, on that front. But, um, yes, so thank you for, uh, for Dara Carney. I am Barry Carter. And if you like this video, leave us in the comment, in the, uh, in the comment section and we may make another one. Thank you. Thank you.